Yeah, we got a 1977 Fender Jazz Bass uh, that I bought from a yard sale down the street from me the other day. Um, the guy, uh, we got to talk and he had a <clears throat> little crappy amplifier out on his yard and we got to talk and it turns out he had one of these for that he was uh, possibly looking to get rid of. So I was able to fortunately talk him out of it. He was uh, n never going to play it again anyway, he said. And so we came to a mutually uh, beneficial agreement on it and now I own it. Uh, the problem is, and was then, and I pointed it out, is that the neck is going to need some work. Um, the truss rod bullet is completely stripped, and the neck has a pretty serious bow in it at the moment. Um, so the action is high, and uh, you know all the other consequences that come along with that. But this is the, one of the cool ones. This is like uh, sort of the Getty Lee type, uh, late 70s bass with the maple neck uh, bound fretboard. And it has kind of the faux mother of pearl block inlays, which I always like the look of this uh, this year's neck, these late 70s ones. Um, but like I said, unfortunately, that bullet um, truss rod is not only stripped, but it's actually cracked. If we look at it closely, I don't know if we'll be able to see it or not in this lighting. I don't have very good lighting at the moment, but there's actually, there we can, you can see it. You see the little crack on the bullet? And that prevents you from actually even getting any purchase on it to turn it, to, to take the bullet off the thing. So what we're going to do, we're going to have to do, get creative in trying to get this um, bullet off of here without damaging anything. Um, so uh, let's see if we can do that. Not only that, but I've ordered another bullet from uh, Stuart McDonald. And um, they wanted to charge me $7 shipping on that damn thing. It's like a, it's one little part. Um, it's about this, you know, this big. It's a little bullet nut, and they wanted to charge me seven dollars shipping. I, I messaged them in the in the little comment section and said, "Hey, man, you guys need to give me some better options on shipping for these little parts, or I'm gonna have to stop ordering from you." Um, and they reduced the shipping a little bit, but still, I mean, that's highway robbery. Seven dollars for a for a nut. But anyway, we're going to take that new nut to try to put it on here um, and make this thing work. We're also probably going to have to put a couple of uh, washers underneath here as well. Uh, it's a pretty common thing with these late 70s um, bases. They didn't give, they didn't thread the uh, truss rods enough, far down enough, that you could get um, good adjustment. Uh, so by the time they're this age and they need to be adjusted more, there's no thread left to adjust it. And I think that's what happened here. It just got over tightened and it got cracked. Uh, but the truss rod is fine, I believe. But, but um, the we're going to have to remove this bullet. So let's go. Let's get to that. Okay, I have the uh, area around the, the bullet taped off here. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use a Dremel tool uh, with a cutoff wheel. And um, we're going to have to come in here and, and cut... Um, a slit that we can insert a flathead screwdriver into. So I'm going to be very careful while doing this and I'm going to try to cut a sideways slit into this thing. Okay, I think we may have enough of a slit there to get started. Let's see. Okay, I, I can use a flathead screwdriver now and insert it into here, whereas before I could not. But the problem is now, uh, as you can see, I'm, this is getting in the way. So I'm going to have to remove this last um, tuning peg uh, temporarily uh, so we can use the screwdriver. Okay, I've had to change angles a little bit because I'm right-handed and I had to get a little more purchase on this and um, let's see if we're able to do this. I, I, I think this thing is going to end up cracking. 
um, and making the situation worse if we're not careful. But let's try one more time to turn it with the screwdriver. I mean, that thing is really in there. I don't think that's going to work. So um, we're going to go to a plan B. Okay, plan B is uh, we're going to take a 7 64th drill bit and we're going to try to drill a hole straight down through this bullet um, without going too far obviously um, so we're going to take our time we're going to try to go very slowly here and uh, we're going to drill a hole straight down through the bullet That's what we need to try not to do is let the bit slip. And it's going to be very difficult on this bullet. So uh, what I might do, yeah, I don't know if there's going to be an easier way to do this. I was going to say that if there was a way we could dimple this bullet to keep the, keep the bit steady so it doesn't slip any. But I think we're just going to have to wing it and do it steady. Okay, the bit isn't cutting it. So we're back to the Dremel tool. But this time instead of... Uh, Instead of cutting along uh, this axis, we're going to cut along uh, this axis so that it will give us a, a straight down sort of leverage on this thing. So, fingers crossed, let's see how this works out. You can actually see this. Okay. There we have a pretty good slit going there. Um, and the idea, and you can see the slit that we already made on this axis, if it will, there we go, if it will focus. So, and you can actually see why I stopped drilling because I had uh, one little slip and it did booger up the headstock just a bit right there. I think I can probably come in with some finish and fix that, um, but I don't want any more mishaps. So that's why we came along this axis with the with the Dremel and abandoned the uh, drill. But let's see if we can get our uh, screwdriver down in here and do some good with this. Well, I think we've ground on it enough to get it to, to get started, but. Uh, the first screwdriver I used apparently is made of some kind of pot metal because it broke the tip right off of it. There's the tip. So, i got to get a better screwdriver, one that's hopefully steel. What is this? This one's Magna USA. Chrome Vanadium. Never heard of Vanadium. Okay. Well, I guess, it's, I guess Vanadium is pot metal because... That's what it looks like to me. Uh, but here's one I think is, I think this one's steel, or this might actually be uh, chromed copper. But let's see what this what happens here. But that's kind of a testament of the resilience of this of this silly bullet, the fact that it broke that screwdriver. Well, let's try this one. We'll go very slowly with it. Well, it is moving, but then it moves right back. Hopefully, if we can just take it easy and take it slowly, we can get it broken loose. Well, there we go. We got it to turn. We got it to turn, so that's good. That's real good. We're going to turn as far as we can over here. And uh, I'm going to have to come back over here make one more slit I think um, to turn it again maybe not Let's see. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to make another slit so let's make another slit on this axis and uh, go from there
I think that's going to allow us to get our screwdriver in deep enough now. I think. Fingers crossed. Okay. See, now we got to just keep turning it. There we go. It's actually pretty good progress so far. Um, Unfortunately, I'm going to have to cut it again on the next axis over, so let us uh, I'll skip ahead. I won't subject you to all of that mess because you've already seen how it's being done, so I know you're, uh, it's like a NASCAR race. I'm sure you're wanting to see a disaster and me to cut half of the headstock off, but <laughs> I'm hoping that doesn't happen. Okay, I've got another slit cut along the next axis forward. And uh, we're going to turn this thing again and see if it moves. All right, I've uh, get a little bit closer look here, and uh, you'll see how I'm doing this. Uh, here's the slit I've made. Here's a screwdriver going in, and hopefully we can turn this over again without it breaking. There we go. It's coming a heck of a lot easier now. Um, the only big pain in the ass is that you have to keep uh, you have to keep making more slits along the uh, axes. So I've got one more slit to go, and then I will be ready. You see, as I go, I'm, I'm trying to widen this uh, slot out because my uh, cutting wheel is pretty thin. Let's try that, see where that gets us. All right. Now hopefully I won't have to I can use our first one again because it's been all around once already. So there we go. Oh man, she's coming good now. If you're wondering what that music is, that's my daughter watching uh, Naughty. Say hi, Izzy. Hi. Okay. Oh, it's coming along now. Oh, that's good. That's good. That's real good. You know, this would have been a better design anyway, to be honest. Um... Uh, if they'd done something like this, then you could just use a, a screwdriver. If they had slits in this like this, 
would have been a way better design. Because uh, everybody knows who's tried to mess with mini truss rods, those hex, uh, those hex keys, they have a tendency to strip out both the keys themselves and the and the female ends too. They strip out with some regularity, and it's a big pain. So let's get this on out of here. And that's what had happened to this one. Uh, this bullet had stripped out and actually cracked open, so you couldn't you couldn't get any purchase on it whatsoever. And when that happens, I mean, unless you do something like this, you're not going to get this bullet off of there. And I wish I had done the slot thing first, hindsight being 2020, instead of uh, well, I guess I did do it first, but I did it along the end. Wish I'd thought of this first. That way I wouldn't have uh, buggered up my headstock right in there. That's a bit of a shame. I'm going to have to come in there with some little dabs of finish and build that back up. Because I don't want that to show. It would just be, uh, be kind of silly to leave it. Sometimes that you got to break a couple eggs to make an omelet. That's just casualty of war. That's the mark of a great repairman on stuff like this is making it so nobody ever knows you were there. Um, in this case I may or may not be able to achieve that, I'm not sure. See. All right, there's our bullet. She's completely out. You see what we had to do to it to get it out. It's not pretty, but it worked. It's a shame about the original bullet not uh, not being able to see this base on into its old age, but. It is what it is. We have a new one to replace it. Uh, the new one, again, I got from Stuart McDonald. I think the part itself was like $3.75, and they wanted $7 for shipping. Um, and I think eventually uh, I talked them down to about 4 bucks for shipping, which I appreci I'm appreciative of that. I realize shipping is expensive, but $7 for shipping, that, I mean, come on. Um anyway let's see let's compare these yeah they're about the same size uh, what I'm hoping to do we are gonna have to make this work uh, we're gonna have to come in here with a couple of washers and I think the washers I'm gonna try to use um, finding something that's gonna work is gonna be a real pain uh, I'm, I think I may have found something but we'll see I'm gonna use these uh, couple two or three probably of these little uh, nylon washers and I think this nylon is going to give me a good spacer. Um, it's also going to uh, resist expanding and contracting, I believe. Um, and uh, I think this will just be a good substitute for kind of a steel washer in there. So, uh, fingers crossed, um, I think I might be able to get away with uh, three of these washers inside. And uh, this base will be back in service. All right, we'll see how these fit. Look, it looks like they're close, um, but I think uh, I think we may have to adjust the outer dimensions a little bit. I don't know, or the inner dimension. Yeah, I think I'm going to drill out 
the inner dimension slightly uh, to make it a slightly larger. Other than that, I think the outer dimension might be just about right. So I'm going to take a drill bit and just run it through the inner dimension. And okay, we're going to get an 11 64ths inch drill bit and see if we can't ream these one of these out. If it's going to work. Okay, now with a 3 16 drill bit. Okay, let's see how they fit now. Uh, we've got the center hole a little bit wider. And I think that's going to work right there. Let's see. Yep, I do have to believe that's going to do it. You can see it's uh, sliding in there. It may take us a little bit to get it all the way in, but we will get it. Wiggle it on in there. And that's one. I'm planning on using at least two. Um, I think it's going to take at least at least that many, um, maybe even three. The, now these are pretty thick washers, so I don't know. Maybe uh, maybe two will get it, but we definitely need some some sort of spacer because um, these were not. Uh, this was not able to adjust the neck the way it was. And did they send me the wrong size? Look at there. Look at that. That's the that's the wrong. It's the wrong size. That is the wrong size thread. You have got to be kidding me. Okay. Stuart McDonald is supposed to be the end all be all of this stuff um, fixing guitars oh, look at this that's not let me find a screw hang on okay just to prove this doesn't fit here's the original one that I just modified uh, here's a bolt that fits it um, alright I don't know what size bolt that is but it is what it is I don't have any calipers, but there, that fits it. Okay, now, same bolt. Here's the new Stuart McDonald replacement. And it's, it's, it's loose on the threads, look. It's not the same size threads. Okay, just to make sure I'm not the crazy one here, I went back to Stuart McDonald's website to see if this bullet um, truss rod nut, um, how they're marketing this. And um, at least here, they're just saying bullet truss rod nut for fender. Um, they don't really specify if it's an import fender, a, a vintage 70s fender, or, or what. If you scroll down and you look at the description, um, you know, I guess if you know what the thread is supposed to be, maybe you can uh, determine whether yours is right. Uh, but in my case, uh, you know, if you have the bullet nut is stuck on the guitar and you have to order a replacement, um, you know, you don't know what the thread is until you take it off. And even then, it's not like everybody's going to have a thread gauge. So it would have been nice if they hadn't put this here as used by Fender after 1971 because it's completely misleading. It lets you uh, think that this is going to fit all the, the bullet style uh, truss rods from the 70s and it does not um, as we've seen the the one that Stuart McDonald here is selling is the wrong size thread it's a larger thread than the one that the that was used by Fender in the 70s 
So buyer beware, uh, if you're gonna buy from Stuart McDonald, um, you may do some uh, some extra research because in my case at least, uh, this is not working out. I'm gonna have to call customer service and get my money back. Well, there's uh, good news and bad news. The bad news again is this this is a piece of junk and it's I guess this is for reissues. I don't know what the hell they're thinking. Just putting on their ad. Um, fender bullet truss rod nut. Oh, when it clearly doesn't doesn't fit the 70s guitars. Um, good news, I guess, is that this one's going to work. Uh, more bad news, though, is it looks like absolute shit. Um, I mean... It's definitely not an ideal situation. It has allowed me those uh, the modification has allowed me to straighten the neck where before it wasn't wasn't even close. At this point, though ugly as it is, this truss rod uh, nut is uh, doing the job. Let's see if we can get to uh, show where we're at. I mean it's it's getting there. It's getting there. And you should have seen it before. It would look like a it looked like a freaking bow. <laughs> it was uh, it was ridiculous. But we're getting close. Uh, it's gonna be a playable base where it definitely was not before. All right, well, here are the results, and as disappointing as it is that uh, that bullet nut didn't work from Stuart McDonald, um, I think we've achieved the results we set out to achieve. Uh, the bass is a heck of a lot more playable. Uh, it still needs a little bit of work. Um, I've got to do some fret work on it. Um, that's why I'll have to remove these strings and do all that, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll save that for another video, perhaps, and uh, for now... Uh, that is concludes our video on how to uh, remove a stuck bullet nut uh, from a 70s fender. If you haven't already subscribed to uh, my channel, please do so below and keep up with future videos. And you all take care.